Hey everyone, I'm Robert Roy with Aries, and today we're going to be covering a one of three part kind of a review of the patient assessment that we do when we're doing any kind of work with the patients outside. Um, this is a breakdown of how you would see it in class. So if you are an EMR student, an EMT student, all the way up to a paramedic student, you're still doing this exact same thing. One of the things that we've noticed is that students set themselves up for failure sometimes because they get so bent around the axle about just repeating the things that are seen on their checklist pretty much as they see them, that they don't get the information that they need to actually do their psychomotor properly or answer questions. A lot of the registry tests now are making you go through this stuff to find the right answer for what you're going to be doing. So I'm going to start today with the scene size up. And I'm gonna show you how we tend to break it down with the area school into three categories or priorities based on what you're doing. No, the registry doesn't make you know this in order. However, if you can get set up to be doing this and just rock right through it, you build momentum. And then now you're not getting into your primary assessment where you are being judged in order, trying to remember what the next step is while also trying to remember what you forgot in the size up. Plus information found here is going to help you with your primary assessment and your interventions. It's gonna make the scenarios in the test and any psychomotor skills that you have to do a whole lot easier to find the right answer in. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is your first priority. Anytime you come up to a scene, your first priority is always yourself. Think about it. We're no more superhuman than the people that we're trying to help. So if I run into a burning building as a firefighter without my gear on, what's gonna to happen to me? I'm gonna become the next um, patient, right? The same thing applies in EMS, in any kind of rescue field. So we want to make sure that you yourself stay safe. Your first priority, and you're used to this as a B, as an EMT student going BSI, seeing safety, or having to put your gloves on, that kind of thing. So your first step is always BSI, seeing safety. And remember that, because when you go to take the registry and you get these paragraph long scenarios that say, you know, you have patient XYZ with these vital signs and this injury. and there may, there may already be people on scene trying to do patient care and you show up and they've been there for 15 minutes doing stuff and what's your first step? Well, it really doesn't matter what has been going on this whole time. Your first step is always BSI scene safety. So if you look at this from a test perspective, your first step is always going to be find the answer that says put your gloves on. That's what you're going to do. You don't have to worry about whether or not um, C collar has been put on, or if you've got vital signs in the scenario, we'll give you all that information, but it's all a distractor. All right, so BSI scene safety. Make sure you can approach your patient without getting hurt. The next scenario, or the next priority that we're gonna talk about is more like a triage. So what are you dealing with? You don't wanna just run up and start working on the first patient you come across, especially in the real world. What if it's, if it's a single person driving a vehicle and they hit a tree and you only have one patient, then okay, that's fine. The first patient's the only patient, that's what you're gonna work on. But what if it's a bus? What if it's two vehicles with two people in them each and you've got four people? Or a motorcycle versus a car and you've got the bike in the car with the driver, but where's the motorcycle rider, right? He may be down in the ditch, further away, or whatever. You're still kind of painting your scene. You're still trying to figure out how many patients you're dealing with. And not only that, but think about the safety aspects because this leads into the next step, which is your need for additional resources. If you have two patients, three patients or whatever, you may not be able to give care to everybody. So you may need additional ambulances, more responders, ALS. You may need the fire department, the power company, the police, depending on what your scene is, you're still kind of painting that picture. So you haven't really gotten to patient care yet. Um, so this is what you're going to be working on here. You get a number of patients and you're, again, you're not doing patient care. It's like a triage. So once you've got that and you've got a really good idea of what you're dealing with and you can get the police out if you need it or whatever, now you're done with your second priority. And then we move into our third one. And this is the one where a lot of students get bent around the axle. We are as bad as educators of telling people that they just have to memorize their checklist, repeat it verbatim, get the point and then move on. And that is true to an extent. However, we kind of back you into a corner with that and just say, memorize a sheet. Well, the sheet says MOI, NOI, and then C-spine, and that's it, right? So this is your third priority. We're gonna go ahead and go with that. So the first thing that you're gonna do when you get to this point, you've verified your scene safety and your own safety. You've got an idea of what your patient load is gonna look like. You've got additional help coming out. Now you have to pick a patient. 
And this is where the last two steps come in. We have to figure out what's going on with our patients so we know what to fix. In a training environment, a lot of times I catch students just saying MOI, NOI, and then consider C-spine, and then they move into their primary assessment. But what they're doing is they're glossing over a ton of information that you need to know before you can really move on. First of all, MOI and NOI. Knowing the difference between the two is huge and knowing what they stand for. Mechanism of injury, which is always gonna be trauma-based, is what actually hit my patient or what did my patient hit? And then NOI, which is nature of illness, is what's going on with my patient. Now, that this is where you're gonna make a decision with just the information you've got as to what road you're gonna go down for possible treatment. You've got a little bit of dispatch information, you've now laid eyes on the patient. Um, what does the scene look like to you so far? And it's okay if you're wrong at this point, you just have to pick a lane and go in it. So if I'm giving you trouble breathing, for example, as an instructor, and I say you've got a patient with trouble breathing, if you just gloss right over MOI, NOI, you say it, I can give you the check mark on there, but now you get to your primary assessment and you know you have to fix trouble breathing. What do you do? You don't know at this point if it's an allergic reaction, you don't know if it's asthma, you don't know if it's CHF, because we didn't actually expound on the nature of illness, you just glossed right over it. So you wanna make sure at this point that whether you're learning this for the chapter test or le learning this to do a psychomotor evaluation, don't just regurgitate the words line for line off of your assessment. Actually say, what is my nature of illness? What is my mechanism of injury? You can take your dispatch information and kind of figure that out. If we were given a picture or a scenario that says something along the lines of, your patient's out on the baseball field, they were just running track, and now they're having a hard time breathing, and oh, by the way, um, they're a 10 year old, or something like that, because asthma is more common in kids. Um, now you know that you're kind of going down the asthma route. If it's, all right, uh, somebody was eating lunch in the, in the lunchroom, and they came in contact with some peanuts, or they were out mowing the grass and they got stung by a bee, now we're talking about allergic reactions, but all that is figured out at that step, at the MOI, NOI. So try to break the habit of just reading from memory what's on the, on the checklist. The idea is that those are gonna be your priority scales. Your, it, all the assessment is, is a priority scale. It doesn't actually solve any problems, right? You're not, none, nowhere in your actual assessment checklist does it tell you what interventions you're going to give. And it's because that's not what it is. All it does is it prioritizes you're gonna give your airway drugs before you give your breathing drugs. You're gonna do those before you give any circulation drugs. If you're doing cardiac arrest, you're gonna flip it and do compressions first, so on and so on. It's important to know what steps are what, and you have to actually consider them. Don't just say MOI or NOI. The last step of your size up is gonna be considering C-spine. Now, one of the issues that we run into as well is that every time we think about C-spine, we're thinking about trauma, right? So the car accident. Um, person fell off the roof, maybe a blast injury, something like that. Those are easy. We're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna probably put a collar on this guy. But the reason this is in the size up is because we don't want you to get pigeonholed into just thinking that C-spine should be done in trauma. There are medical calls where you probably will have to do this as well, and we want you to consider that. Consider the patient that may be an elderly patient. Um, as a scenario, let's say that you've got a welfare check happening on a 68-year-old female that lives alone in her house, um, no, but the neighbor hasn't seen her in a couple of days, things of that nature. Police officer knocks, nobody answers. He enters the home and he finds her semi-conscious on the bathroom floor. It's the middle of January in New York and it's cold in the house and she apparently hasn't moved in a long time and she's laying on her side. All right, that's it. No sign of trauma, nothing like that. So you as the student or the provider, depending on where you're at, uh, you enter the home you go through your size up, you, you kind of have an idea of what you're gonna be dealing with. Why do we consider C-spine? Well, she hasn't moved in a long time, and this is an elderly patient. Um, muscle, muscular dystrophy, things like that. She may not be able to just write her head back up without hurting herself. So if you have to help move her, if you need to put her on a collar for that, you can do so. Uh, some paramedics prefer to have a collar on patients if they take an ET tube or things like that. So there may be times where there's not really trauma involved, but you would still want to put a C-collar on the patient. And that is the end of your scene size up. So again, it's three priorities, right? You have BSI scene safety, that's gonna be your personal safety, make sure that you're okay. Once you can actually get into your scene and take a look and see what's going on, then we wanna figure out what we're dealing with. So get a number of patients, because again, this is your medical. 
So get a number of patients, figure out any additional resources you may need, get them en route. Once you've done that, now you can actually pick a patient, usually because you know which ones are your bad ones and you know which ones you could probably, you know, direct to go stand at a tree over there or something like that. Pick the patient you want to work on. Using your index of suspicion, which you've probably heard that in class, as well as your dispatch information and what you've seen, determine what your mechanism of injury is or your nature of illness, and that's what you're going to treat. So if you're having trouble breathing, which is pretty vague, if you're getting that from dispatch, then that coupled with what you see on scene may lead you down the allergic reaction route or the asthma route or whatever, and that dictates what medicine you're going to give. So now when you start to figure out, okay, let's say I'm going to do an asthma patient. Uh, it's going to be oxygen, albuterol, and if that's, you know, um, if they need to, we can take them to the hospital and stuff like that. That being said, we don't really want to give it in that order. And that's going to be the kind of topic that we get into when we talk about the primary assessment is what do we do? How do we order our assess our interventions? Why do we say ABC? What does that matter? But even from there, if you don't know what you're dealing with, if you don't actually give some thought to your MOI and your NOI, you've got a whole slew of drugs and you don't know which ones to use. So that's gonna be it for this one. Um, stay tuned, we're gonna be working on the next one for the primary assessment. We'll go through that in ways that you can figure out how to get the primary assessment to, to kind of track from what you learn in school to how it actually plays out in the real world on your scenarios, things of that nature. And then we're gonna do the secondary assessment and talk about what interventions you can do where do you put the head to toe? Why does that matter? And get you guys through your school, get you past registry and out to the streets to save people's lives. Have a great one.